Many thanks to Jerb, Jaren, DC Podcast, Taggy's Tag West, That One Random, and Great Poncho for making this video possible. Contamination zones have piqued the curiosity of the masses, and a flood of great questions have been sent my way, but instead of answering them directly, I decided to convert them into tips for surviving gas zones. So here it is 50 tips for surviving contamination zones in Daisy 1.14. The gas in contamination zones won't decay your NBC suit, only your filter. Gas masks are not less effective at lower percentages, nor do they decay faster at lower percentages. Sprinting or being low on stamina or breath won't consume your gas filter any faster. Apart from these three gas masks, no other mouth covering protects you from the gas and nor do helmets. The combat gas mask filter lasts 12 minutes inside the gas zone, where these green filters last 8 minutes. Outside gas zone areas, filters last 10 times longer, but will reduce your stamina regen by 2.5 times, and you use more stamina per action. However, with the white gas mask and NBC gas mask, if you take the filter off, you don't get any of the stamina penalties, and you get to keep the heat benefits of wearing one too. This white gas mask spawns in military and police locations, where the combat mask and NBC mask spawn only in military locations. Being naked versus wearing standard clothing makes no difference at all, only NBC clothing protects you. While these pieces of gear have a stat called chemical protection on them, they don't reduce the chances or frequency of bleeds, and they don't slow down the contraction of gas poisoning versus not wearing anything at all. If you are missing just one piece of NBC clothing, you can still get the gas poisoning disease. A person with one piece of NBC clothing will die much faster than a person with four pieces. Having unprotected body parts underwater doesn't protect you from the gas. Winning gas zones obviously take the gear that you want, but don't make the mistake of equipping it right there and then you will start bleeding if you unequip your NBC gear. Driving through a gas zone will have the exact same effect of being outside of a vehicle, so there's no difference. The gas doesn't damage vehicles or vehicle parts switched on or off, which is also the case for generators. If you get into a car with a driver that has a full NBC suit and a gas mask, they might be trying to kill you inside the gas with their vehicle. Don't double click on your mask, filter or gear. If you unequip it, there's a good chance that you'll start bleeding, but swapping out filters and gear pieces is fine like this. The quality level of your NBC suit and gas mask makes no difference at all, but your shoes can become ruined by running. Gas masks and NBC gear can all be repaired with the tire repair kit and duct tape, where masks can also be repaired with epoxy putty. There is currently no way to recharge the percentage of gas filters, not even with charcoal tabs. NBC suit parts all spawn inside medical and military locations, but it can take quite a while to get all the parts. NBC suit parts are all as waterproof as the raincoat, but other waterproof gear provides better camo and heat benefits. The new hazmat infected can't give you any form of gas poisoning, but they can make you bleed and ruin your NBC suit, allowing gas to contact your skin and give you gas poisoning. All infected that don't wear hazmat suits and all animals die in the gas. The more health they have, the slower they will die, with the bear taking minutes to die. Eating gas poisoned meat, fat or guts cooked or raw is fine, for now at least. The same applies to fishing and farming in gas zones, it's fine to eat the produce. Disinfected items will not lose their disinfected status in the gas zones and are perfectly fine to use. Food and clothing left in contamination zones can't make you sick. If you equip clothes of someone that died in gas poisoning, you won't get any ineffects either. You can't transfer gas poisoning to another player. I tried for over an hour on a weak immune system player using various methods. Not repairing bleeds caused by the gas zone will still give you wound infection. Even if you're wearing a full NBC suit with a gas mask, bleeding while inside a gas zone will give you the gas poisoning disease somehow through your NBC suit. These pox injectors appear to be the only way to survive the gas poisoning disease and will revive players instantly if they're unconscious too, with or without the disease. However, when it comes to the disease, pox will only remove the gas poisoning disease, it will not make you immune to the gas for any amount of time. Pox spawns in medical locations where the EpiPen spawn. Apart from pox, salines and other medicine has no effect on the potency of the gas. Before you go into a gas zone, ensure your hunger and thirst are good because you can't eat or drink with a gas mask on now. None of the tents provide any protection from the gas and nor do any buildings. It doesn't matter if you're in the center of a gas zone or the very outside, if you see this green mist with the particles floating around, you're gaining gas poisoning levels at the same rate everywhere. If you log out of a static contamination zone, you will log back into the same location but if you log into a dynamic one, you'll get teleported out of the area. The spawn point at Riffy has been removed, but you can now spawn slightly north of here, so be careful not to run through the gas area on your way to Berezina. You can cheese run into a gas area to loot an item and get out before you die, but you will be severely injured with little chance of survival. Here are maps showing all of the gas locations on Chanaris and Livonia, including the size of the gas areas, links below. There are three to six dynamic gas zones at any one time, and they all last 30 minutes each. 
This is the sound of artillery and imminent danger, and this is the new sound of helicopters. A flare will appear 15 seconds before the rumble of artillery is heard, but this could be someone trolling you with a flare gun. However, the flare for artillery only lights up an area for around 15 seconds where a flare gun will last much longer. It's possible to build bases inside static or dynamic gas zones and structures, tents or items within the tents won't get damaged by the gas. In Riffy, you can go above the gas and get no ill effects on this deck, which is also the case for Pavlova military base on top of the hospital and the office. Bonus tab. If you have an EpiPen, bandages and a pox injector, you can run to the safe zones in Riffy and Pavlova without dying and then you... Uh... There is still more to learn about contamination zones and gas poisoning, so I'd highly recommend this video to fully prepare yourself for the many deaths that await us all in these deadly gas zones. But if you still have questions, make sure you ask them in the comments, along with any feedback that you believe the devs should know about gas zones in general. If you learned something new in this video, then do give it a like, which will help share it, and then perhaps somebody else can learn something new too. I want to say a big thank you to the awesome Daisy Pandemic community for making my research possible. Thank you for your hospitality, including Raxto and Living Games for providing tips and info for this video and of course thanks to you for watching this video to the very end and supporting my content thank you and don't forget to have a good day <laughs>